guys, it's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today we're going to be doing the match preview for Sevilla versus Barcelona in the Copa del Rey semifinal. Barcelona now just three games away from winning the Copa del Rey and it's their biggest shot at winning a trophy this season. It's against a very, very difficult opponent in Sevilla. Before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button so I get the 200 likes on this video. It would be very much appreciated. And of course, hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 9 p.m. Central Eastern Time and is taking place at the Ramon Sanchez Pijuan, which is of course Sevilla's home stadium. And this match will be the first out of two legs in this tie. Of course, the semifinals is going to be two legs. First leg is going to be, of course, tomorrow, and the second leg will be on March the 3rd. And the referee for this match has been confirmed, and it is your main man, Mateo Laros, as the referee. He's been assigned with the biggest game of the two legs, and he's going to be refereeing this match. Expect all the dodgy decisions to go to Sevilla's way. Expect him to make the game all about him like he always does, so strap your bills for that one. And the VR referee will be Iglesias Villanueva. Let's get in now and talk about Sevilla. Of course, as we all know, Sevilla is probably the fourth best side in La Liga. Of course, the traditional top three will probably be Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Atletico Madrid. And fourth is always Sevilla. Sevilla are a top, top side. And of course, they are coached by Hugo Lopetegui, who is, of course, a former Real Madrid manager and former Spain coach. Of course, but he was supposed to leave Spain to the World Cup back in 2020. Got sacked after taking the Real Madrid job a few days before the World Cup. Gave us that nice little 5-1 victory in the 2018-2019 season, so shout out to him. But he's now the Sevilla coach, and he's been doing very, very well there. Of course, won the Europa League last season, and now he's making them a very, very strong team. But currently, at Sevilla, there's a bit of an injury crisis. As we all know, a lot of their star players have been injured. Firstly, on the weekend, their star forward, Lucas Ocampos, got injured just days away before the Copa del Rey against Barcelona, and it was a tackle by Dejene. Dejene came in, ankle breaker tackle. It was absolutely disgusting. I, he got stretched off the pitch. He hasn't been completely ruled out for this game quite yet, but it doesn't look like he's going to make this match. And also Sevilla starting fullbacks on the right-hand side is Jesus Navas. On the left is Marcus Ocuna. They are both going to miss this match. And of course, the replacement on the left-hand side is Escudero, and he hasn't played much since November. He had an operation in November. He's only played just the past few games, so he's not really, you know, match sharp as well. So that's another big blow for them as well. But in the Sevilla team, there are four former Barcelona players. You have Munir, who we've probably all seen play. Alex Vidal, who will be starting out right back in this match. Of course, Ivan Rakitic, who a lot of people consider a Barcelona legend. Not in my eyes, he's just, you know, a good player that played for Barcelona. And of course, the former La Masia player, Sergi Gomez. Now, the last time Barcelona faced Sevilla in any competition was back in October in a 1-1 draw at the Camp Nou with Luke Dion scoring from a corner in the 8th minute and Philippe Coutinho getting back a goal two minutes later. Now, of course, this is the first game where Ronald Koeman dropped points as a Barcelona manager in the league. And it was a very difficult game on the night. Very, very evenly matched. Of course, Barcelona couldn't get the win on the night. And of course, you have to keep in mind that this Barcelona, you know, just straight after the pandemic, you know, the squad's still trying to gel. New players, new manager, new ideas. And of course, Sevilla had already a year under Jürgen Lobotegi, so take that into consideration. But interesting stat about Sevilla coming into this match is that in the last 16 games in all competition, their current record is 13 wins, 2 draws, and 1 defeat to Atletico Madrid. In the last 9 games, they have won 8. And they are yet to concede a goal in the Copa del Rey in 5 matches. So, so far in the Copa del Rey this season, they have not conceded a single goal, but of course, they have been facing very, very low oppositions. Let's get in now and analyze Sevilla. Of course, in the lead, they are currently 4th place, and probably right for so, and they have played so far 21 games, and they've won 13, drew 3, and lost 5, and they're currently sat on 42 points which also means that they're one point behind Barcelona so far in La Liga, so they're pretty much on Barcelona's level. And if you look at the last five games in all competition, they have won every single one, and they did not concede a single goal. In their last match, they beat Hetafe 3-0, they beat Almira in the last round of the Copa del Rey 1-0, they beat Ibar 2-0, they beat Valencia in the round 16 of the Copa del Rey 3-0, and they beat Cadiz 3-0. So there's four games I want to analyze for Sevilla. The four games are the last game on the weekend against Hetafe. And also in the beginning of January, they had a very, very tough run. And they had back-to-back -back games against very strong side, against Real Sociedad and Atletico Madrid. They beat Real Sociedad 3-2, and they lost to Atletico Madrid 2-0. And I want to take a look at those games as well. Let's start off with their last game against Hetafe. They did beat Hetafe on the weekend 3-0 with Munir scoring. Papu Gomez, their new signing, he has scored an absolute screamer. And Yusuf Endesiri getting a goal on the night as well. You can see the starting lineup on the screen. It's something we can definitely look forward to in this match. Bono and goal. Alex Vidal, Kunde, who a lot of Barcelona fans want to join Barcelona. Diego Carlos and Sergio Escudero. Oliver Torres, Juan Jordan, who's a great, great player. And of course, Jemandia holding the midfield. Suso on the right wing. Ocampos on the left wing, which probably won't play in this match. And Yusuf and Nasiri up top. Sevilla went 1-0 up. Then Hatafe had to switch formations and they had to go a bit more attacking and they were vulnerable at the back. And that's why Alejandro Gomez and El Nasiri scored two goals in a minute. Now let's take a look at that run where they had a double header against Real Sociedad and Atletico Madrid. Let's start off with the Real Sociedad match. They beat them 3-2 on the night with Yusuf and the City scoring a hat-trick. He's coming in on hot, hot form. And Diego Carlos getting an own goal and Alexander Isaac scoring for Real Sociedad. You see that lineup, of course, from Sevilla. 
very, very similar. Again, Bonu and Goal again, Jesus Navas and Acuna, they won't be playing. Most likely will be Alex Vidal and Escudero. Two center backs, Kunde and Diego Carlos. In the midfield, Fernando, Juan Jordan, and Ivan Rakitic. On the left wing was Ocampos. We probably won't see him in this match, of course. Use it under City up top and Suso on the right wing. If you look at Real Sociedad's team, of course, they did play a very, very strong team. But as we all know, they were on a pretty bad run at that point before they faced us in the Super Cup. This match was absolutely crazy. Sevilla went 1-0 up, brought it back to 1-1. Then went to 2-1, then 2-2, then 3-2. But in the second half, there were no goals. Again, Sevilla just absolutely dominating in the press. And they just killed Real Sociedad on the counterattack. And finally, I want to take a look at the last match against Atletico Madrid, where they did lose 2-0 at the one that Metropolitano, with Correa and San Miguel getting on the score sheet. Again, their lineup is very, very similar. Bono and goal, same fullbacks, they're definitely going to be replaced. Same two center backs, midfield is the exact same, and the front three were exactly the same. So in this match, they go with the same lineup, but as we all know, Atletico Madrid are a very, very defensive side. They basically just parked the bus and took their time, and of course, Sevilla were the, actually the pushing team in this match, because, you know, they play more attacking football than Atletico Madrid. In the end, I think we did hit them on the counterattack and it forced Sevilla to push up a bit more. Again, another counterattack from the guys and it absolutely sealed the game for them. So overall from Sevilla, we can expect them to be a very, very attacking side on the night. Of course, they're very, very well coached by Logotegi and they also have very, very good players. I expect Sevilla to go very, very attacking on the night. It's going to be an end-to-end -end game and Barcelona really need to be sharp in the defensive and attacking aspect of this match. Let's get it now to the squad list. The squad list has been released and confirmed, and there are some huge, huge surprises. The squad list is as follows. Ter Stegen, Busquets, Griezmann, Messi, Dembele, Ricky Puch, Neto, Longlet, Pedri, Trincao, Jordi Alba, Fernandez, De Jong, Umtiti, Junior, Firpo, Inaki, Peña, Elijah, Mariba, Mingueta, Conrad, and Alex Collado. So as you can see from the squad list, there are three big exclusions. Firstly, Sergio Dez has a right thigh discomfort and he is out and his recovery will determine his availability. Secondly is Pianch, he has a left foot discomfort and just like Dez, he is out and his recovery will determine his availability. And finally, Braithwaite has a strained right thigh and he is out and his recovery will determine his availability. So overall on the squad list, very, very happy that Coleman replaced those three players with Barcelona B players at Elias Mariba, Conor de Fuente, and Alex Collado. Disappointing about Dest, of course, he was supposed to come and play this game. Hopefully he'll be fit for PSG and again, another muscle discomfort for Dest. Him and muscle discomforts are probably going to get married in the future because he's been just, it's just been him and muscle discomforts for the past two months and it's been absolutely crazy. Hopefully he can recover well. Other than that, the players on the screen right now will be traveling to the Ramon Sanchez Bizuan to fight for the semifinals of the Copa del Rey. Time now to get into Ronald Coleman's press conference reaction. Of course, he did his press conference this morning, accompanied by the media, and was asked a lot of questions about the team's physique and how the team is doing and the big match coming up tomorrow. Let's get in and see what he had to say. So that's by saying that it's a two-game tie for us. It's important to get a good result tomorrow. We know them well, and it will be a great game. The injuries are there because several players are not well physically. This isn't the time to take more risks. I think we have now eight or nine players out in total, but for any problem, there is a solution. Then Coleman was asked if he'll use Frankie de Jong as a center back in this match. He said, if we put Frankie de Jong as a center back, we will miss someone in the midfield. We have to decide thinking about the tactics of this game. We want someone playing in the center back spot that is used to playing there. Then again, for the hundredth time, he was asked about Messi to PSG and how the preseason press is, you know, all over Messi. He said, I don't know why they do this. If they want to talk about Leo's future, let them talk. Then he was asked about the Leon manager Rudy Garcia's quotes about him. I'll read those quotes really quickly. He said that I read that Cohn was slightly offended by PSG talking about Messi, but he was not shy to talk about the pie even after the transfer window was closed. Coleman responded that saying Leon Coach seems to like to be in the press a lot and wants to be a leading player. It's not important to me. We focus on playing. Next Tuesday, we will play against PSG in the Champions League and we will see what happens. He was asked about the team's unity and mental strength, saying how is it? He said, with everything that's happening to us, I give the team a 10 out of 10. We've highlighted the team's mentality. Then he was asked about the possibility of the Candu being a vaccine center in Catalonia. He said, it's a very important topic. If we can help, we will help. I don't know how the president will think about this, but I'm in favor of helping in whatever way we can. Then he was asked about Osman Mingueta saying, look, how's he doing? Of course, he's not even a first team player. He's been in Barcelona B, but he's been part of the first team throughout this whole season. How do you assess him so far? The Oscar is with us and he has improved a lot. He has taken the opportunity to be with us and he has played many, many games, also in different positions. That's why he's really important to us. He has grown thanks to the help of his teammates. He's asked about the competition in the squad, saying that we have quality in the team, but we lack competition in some positions. Nonetheless, I am proud of the team. He continues on by saying that I'm learning a lot as a coach this season. We've changed things for the team and the club. We're on a good path. We help youngsters play without forgetting that we have to win. There's no team that creates as many opportunities as we do. We have creativity. We have one-on-one -on -one against, and of course, we have the best player in the world. He's asked about Umtiti, saying, look, is Umtiti ready for this game? Is he physically ready? He said, Umtiti, physically, he's fine. He has the options to play tomorrow. We are also aware of his physical condition due to his history. We had to think about this condition, but he has shown in the games that he has the quality as a center defender. Then he was asked about the big blow to Ronald Rajo, saying, look, can we see Rajo play against PSG in that first leg? He said, we aren't really anything out at the moment. We have to see when he recovers from his injury, and we don't want to set a date. We will take the freshest players to the game against PSG, those who are better to continue going game by game. Then he was asked about Dest, saying, look, Dest has had muscle discomfort for the past two months. What's wrong with him? He said the Dest he trained today, but he continues with discomfort. We had decided to leave him out, and he will not return into the list until he's 100% fit. 
If he's not with us on Saturday, then surely he'll be there against PSG. Then Coleman's asked about Sevilla, saying, look, they're a very, very good side. What are your thoughts on them? He said, in the next month or so, we play Sevilla three times, and we are excited about this because they are a great team that acquire more effort from us. He said it will be up to us to beat Sevilla. Sevilla are very organized, a very strong team physically with many, many talented players. We have to manage their press very well, and when the ball is with us, we have to be in the best shape possible. Finally, Coleman was asked about Messi being the GOAT. Of course, there was a Super Bowl on the weekend, and Jamie Easton from VN Sports asked Coleman, look, they had like this nice picture of all the goals from each sport. They said that Tom Brady was a GOAT in uh, football. Jordan basketball, Wayne Gretzky for hockey, and Lionel Messi for actual football. What are your thoughts on that? Coleman said, in the beginning, it was difficult to compare Messi to previous eras. What Messi did for this club is amazing, the number of goals and tournaments. I didn't watch the Super Bowl, of course, because it was too late for me, and of course, I had to prepare for this game. Messi is the best player in history. It is tough to compare him to previous eras like Cruyff and Maradona. But nonetheless, Messi is the greatest player in the history of football, although it is always difficult to compare him with other players from previous eras. But what I saw from him for the past 15, 20 years, Messi is something very, very special and amazing. And that concluded Ronald Coleman's press conference. Let's get it now to the lineup predictions. We're going to start off with Ronald Coleman. I'm going to try my best to predict this lineup, and I feel like I'm going to get this lineup bang on the money. I've got this lineup on the screen right now. Ter Stegen in goal, Desmond Guetta, Longled, Jordi Alba, Bustas, Young Pedri, Dembele, Messi, and Antoine Griezmann. I think Coleman's going to go full strike in this match, and I think he's going to pick the Gala 11. The real question is, is in the defense, will he go with Umtiti or will he go with Dest? As we all know, Longled, Jordi Alba, and Mingueta will 100% start. The question is, who's going to take that other spot? Will it be Umtiti and then Mingueta at right back, or will it be Dest at right back and then Mingueta at center? back. I think the best option is to go with Mingueta as center back. As we all know, Ronald Coleman said after the post-match press conference against Real Betis, that he doesn't really like Umtiti and Langlet as a center back pairing. We could also see De Jong as center back. That could be an option. Of course, he is right-footed. But again, in that box box position, he's been absolutely fantastic. So I expect him to stay there as well. So that's the big question in this lineup. Will he go with Des? Will he go with Umtiti? Of course, they're staying to stay in goal. I don't see him bring in Neto. Of course, Neto didn't even play against Granada. Why would he play in a tougher match against Sevilla? Front three, pretty much set in stone. You could bring in Trincao, maybe for Griezmann. But I think Coleman's going to stick with this lineup and go full strength. So that was my lineup prediction for Ronald Coleman. Let me know down below what you think Ronald Coleman's going to go with. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was a Barcelona coach. And for the second time this season, I have picked the exact lineup I have predicted for Ronald Coleman. And that lines on the screen right now. Ter Stegen in goal, Desmond Guatelangla, Jordi Alba, Busquets, the young Pedri, Dembele, Messi, and Antoine Griezmann. Basically going to say the same thing, like I said, for Ronald Coleman. The big question is, will he pick Des or Mtiti? And I would go with Des as well and play Mingueta as a center back. To check his day in goal, of course, you could see De Jong coming to center back position. But you have to keep De Jong in that midfield where he's been absolutely fantastic. Again, front three, you could bring in Trink Cal for Griezmann. But I would stick with Griezmann in this game as well just to keep it full strength. This is my lineup as well. Usually, I'd ask you down below, would you rather pick my lineup or Coleman's lineup? But they're both the exact same thing. So let me know down below what you think of the lineups. Score prediction time. Time to predict the score for this match. Again, it's going to be an absolutely difficult game. Of course, at the Ramon Sanchez Piz 1, one of the most difficult stadiums in La Liga. It's going to be one hell of a game. With this being two legs, I don't see really Barcelona going on the front foot. And of course, I do see Sevilla trying to dominate the game as they're at home. And they're going to have to return to the Camp Nou where they don't have really the best record. So I'm going to go with Barcelona drawing this game 1-1. I do see Barcelona getting the win, of course. I do see Barcelona losing, to be honest, maybe by two goals. But I do think the draw will be the most fair result on the night. Of course, it all depends on the lineup from Ronald Koeman and from Lobotegi. Will they both go full strength? Will Lobotegi make a few rotations? I don't think Koeman will make any rotations. Same with Lobotegi. I think they'll both go full strength. Of course, all the players are very, very tired. So I do think a draw is the most likely result in this match. So I'm going to go with Barcelona drawing this game 1-1. Let me know your score predictions down in the comments below. So that's my match preview for Sevilla versus Barcelona in the semifinal of the Copa del Rey. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know your lineups and, of course, your score predictions. And make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys some more for the live watch along. Set the mind on the screen. Come and join me watch the game with me. Follow straight away by my match review after the match. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care and Forza Barca. <laughs>